Do you ever feel like you're under some sort of demonic attack? If you feel like you're under some sort of demonic attack, the reason is because you are. Whether you are a believer or non-believer, it doesn't matter. You are a target for the enemy. Now, his tactics change from person to person, but the person that's closest to God is going to receive a barrage of different types of attacks. If you don't believe me, listen to what Peter says. He says that we ought to be of sober spirit or be sober, be on alert. Why? Because our adversary, he calls him our adversary, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone or whomever he may devour. But look what he says. He says, but resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced, are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. In other words, this is happening on a global stage. The question is, what do you do? Is there some sort of way that you can stop this, that you can, in other words, that you may hear this, bind these evil spirits? Is there a way that you can possibly bind the devil or an evil spirit or any, anything attacking you? In short, no, there is no such thing as believers binding an evil spirit. There's no such thing as a believer binding the devil. When you look at Matthew, he states then that whatever you bind on earth will have will be bound in heaven. And if it's in the perfect tense, meaning that it, has, it will already have been bound by heaven. Same thing with the loosing, which is just him speaking to them that through the power of the spirit, they will know what has been bound and what has been loosed by heaven. And they will just simply declare it. So there's no such thing as us actually binding the devil or anything like that, because if we could, well, then that would solve all of our problems, wouldn't it? All we need is one person with one strong prayer life to be able to bind the devil. And then all of our problems are over with. But that's not how that works. The only time that he'll be bound is when God has him bound in the pit for a thousand years and then he'll be released. But in the meantime, we have to deal with the onslaught. The Bible tells us how we ought to do so as well. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely power for the destruction of fortresses. Some verses may say through the pulling down of strongholds. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised against or high thought raised against raised up against the knowledge of God and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. The issue is we've got these things that come at us. They may tell us all sorts of things that we're not worthy, that we are not capable, we're not smart, we're not any of these things. That's the enemy who wants to tell us that we are defeated, but we are told that we are more than overcomers in him. And John tells us in 1 John 5 that our overcoming is because of our faith. How do we resist how do we fight? How do we do that? How do we not necessarily bind every spirit, but how do we make so that these spirits, that these issues, that these attacks have no bearing in our lives? Well, Peter says that we ought to, in this statement, say to be alert and be sober minded. He says to resist him. And then look what James says in James chapter five, verse 13. He says that is anyone among you suffering? The word for suffering is the word for weak. Then he must pray. Prayer. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church. And what are they going to do? And they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Look what it says. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. And the point that he's speaking of is that if a person is weak in spirit, a person is suffering going through, then what do they do? You pray. Why? Because the closer you get to him, that is the closer you get to God, the better. Our issue is always one thing. It boils down to one thing. That is proximity. The closer you get to him, the further you are away from anything that can come against you. And there will be things that are going to constantly come against you. And so how do you fight those things that constantly come against you? Constantly get closer to him. How do I know so? Because James says it also in chapter four, he says, verse seven says, submit therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So what do we do? Draw near to him. In doing so, that's resisting the devil and he will flee. So any of these spiritual attacks that come against you by the enemy, whatever spiritual attack it is in every way, shape, form, or fashion that may come at you, be it a person, be it finance, be it physical, whatever, you name it, we all have to deal with it. The way that you fight against that, the way that you deal with these issues, these 
demonic attacks. And again, we do believe that there are demonic attacks. The devil is not quiet and is going to lay down simply because you have placed your faith in Christ, simply because he knows that you are on your way to heaven. No, now the fighting, the attack intensifies. He wants, if, if he can't stop you from getting to heaven, he wants to get you there as bloodied and defeated in your mind as possible. And how do you fight that? You don't fight him. That's the key. Let me say this loud and clearly. You do not fight him. That's not how you do that. That's not how you gain victory. How you gain victory over his attacks is simply ignore him, resist him, and go closer to God. If your focus is on him, the enemy is behind you and he can do absolutely nothing. Do not fight him. Instead, focus on Christ, move forward towards him, and then watch how victorious your life is. Are you going to be successful in everything you do? No, that's impossible. It's not going to happen. But what's going to happen internally? One, you won't even notice what the devil is doing, what the enemy is trying to do. You'll be so focused on your relationship with Christ, the joy, the task he has set before you, the fact that you are running to him and how fulfilled you feel that abundant life that Christ promised. You'll now you will now experience that because you are no longer focused on a fight against an enemy that you can't beat. God will beat him for you. So that's what you ought to do. Don't fight him. Focus on Christ. Amen.